Daddy, I want more! So I just did a quick Google search and it turns out that that's not the line that Veruca Salt says in Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, but I don't have it in me to exclaim something like that again, so we're just gonna move on. But as crafters, be honest with me, do you ever feel that way? Do you ever feel like Veruca Salt every time you see a new tool or product come out, you feel like you have to have it? I know that I can be guilty of this, but today I thought that it might be fun to make a simple video talking about the tools and supplies that I already have that I can't imagine living in this craft room without. Now, when I was originally thinking of this video, I thought that I would come up with five supplies, but that proved hard to do. So I settled on eight, and I did actually sneak a ninth one in there, kind of. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. Uh, but I feel like eight products is pretty good considering how many supplies and tools I have in this room. I'm not, I'm not mad at that. Now, I do want to make an important distinction that these are not necessarily the eight essential tools that you need to have as a beginner. Some of them, I would say, are. But these are really just the eight tools that I personally reach for all the time and can't imagine going without. I think that some of these will be really obvious, and then I think a couple of them may surprise you. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the list. So probably not a surprise to any of you who have been watching my content for a while, and certainly not a surprise to any of you longtime crafters or card makers out there, but the very first item on my list is a stamp platform. Now, I'm no stranger to stamp platforms. I have used many different ones, but I will say that my tried and true stamp platform that I go back to all the time is the larger Misty. I have it in the black because I'm not really a pink guy. No shame if you are. I love that they offer it in the black. And regardless of what brand of stamp platform you have, I think that they are absolutely essential if you're going to incorporate stamping into your card making. Not only do they help you line your stamps up and give you greater accuracy when you are stamping, but they also allow you to re-stamp the same image multiple times in the exact same spot. This means that you're wasting less time and wasting less paper because let's be honest, if you mess up your stamp and you're not using a stamp platform, you can pretty much guarantee you're never going to get that stamp in the exact same spot again. Now, by design, the Misty that you see me using here works with a magnet, so the base of the platform is actually magnetic, and you can use your magnet that comes with the Misty to hold your paper in place. That just allows you to keep the paper still while you're stamping. Sometimes whenever you close the door and open it, that photopolymer stamp can stick to the paper and make it move around, and this just helps you keep the paper in place. Now, the magnet works well, but what works even better, and this is where I'm sneaking in my ninth supply, is this waffle flower or grip mat. So Waffle Flower recently came out with these grip mats. They are essentially just very large photopolymer stamps. Um, so it's just a full solid sheet of photopolymer. And if you purchase the six and a half by eight inch grip mat, it fits perfectly inside of your Misty. So I've actually been using this recently over the magnet. I still keep my magnet in there every now and then I'll pull it out. But I find that the grip mat actually does an even better job keeping the paper in place. So the two of these together just make my stamping so easy and foolproof. Now I do wanna mention one thing about the Misty that I do feel is important for me to share. And that is that the maker of the Misty includes a Bible verse printed directly on the product. And I find that important to mention because I know that a lot of my subscribers are not necessarily Christian or maybe practice another religion. And so I do want to give you full transparency and disclosure that your product will have a Bible verse on it. Now I wanna make it clear that I'm not trying to make any stance on religion one way or the other here. I just believe that it is only right and transparent for me to let you know that because I know that some purchasers may be sensitive to that. Now a couple of other options out there are the Altenew Stamp Wheel. This is another really popular option that came out not too long ago. It was actually built with the photopolymer mat inside already, so very similar to the Waffle Flower Grip Mat that I added to my Misty. Now one thing I will mention about the Stamp Wheel is that the top plate is not actually attached via a hinge or anything to the bottom platform, so you will be picking up your top plate, applying your stamp, and manually putting your top plate back down into the notches on all the corners. And so that's not really a pro or a on, just kind of a difference to note. And I will say one thing that's really nice about the fact that it's a wheel is that you can actually make these really cool kind of wreath patterns because you can take the plate up, move it over, turn, put it back down, and just stamp a full circle like a wreath. And then the other stamp platform I have in my collection, I told you I have a lot of them, is the Sizzix Stamp and Stencil Mat. So this one is 
the most different from the other three, I would say. One is because of its size. As you can see, it's much larger. And that's actually the reason I don't use it that much. It's a great product. I just find that it's a little large for me. Um, if you're doing scrapbooking, I think that this is a great option because obviously scrapbooking is a larger format. Uh, but as a car maker, I don't personally grab for this one that much, but it is another great option. Very well made, very sturdy. Another big difference is that it actually uses a sticky grip mat versus a magnet or a photopolymer mat. That is one other important note here is that sometimes the back of your card might have a little bit of a sticky residue on the back after you use this, but it's pretty easy to buff that off. Number two on my list is this glass craft mat. Now, the fact that my glass craft mat made the list is not going to be a surprise to most of you, especially if you followed me for any time on TikTok or Instagram or attended any of my live streams, but I just cannot make this video without giving it a shout out. Now, when I started card making, I just used a regular self-healing cutting mat, like I think a lot of folks do, and it was great, but to be honest, I never really cut on it, so I didn't really feel like I needed all of the cut lines and extra stuff that was on it. So I decided I would upgrade. I settled on this glass craft mat and honestly, I have never looked back. I love that I can get pretty much any medium on it, tape, ink, paint, glue, pastes, whatever. And it's always been super easy to clean up. And if I ever really wanna give it a deep clean, I can just spray some Windex on it and clean it just like I would my mirror in my bathroom. The other really cool thing about this glass craft mat, which I don't take as much advantage of as I probably should, is the fact that it's magnetic. So if you're working on a project and you don't want your cardstock to slip away or move, you can actually just use these magnets to hold your cardstock in place. Oh, and did I mention you can use it as a dry erase board? So if you're working and you wanna take some quick little notes next to you, you can do that as well. So all that to say, I love my glass craft mat. Now I will mention they are a little pricey. The self-healing mats are definitely more budget friendly, especially for beginners. But if you are looking for an upgrade, I don't think you'll be disappointed in one of these. I would also be remiss not to mention that if you are a content creator or just like filming your creations, the glass can be a little difficult to work with when it comes to reflections because of course it does reflect the lights and cameras and stuff that you have behind you. So that won't be important to a lot of people, but if you are planning to film your content, you'll need to work around that. And if you do decide you want to upgrade to a glass craft mat, I do have a 20% off coupon in my description. So we've given a lot of love to a couple of pretty big heavy hitters and some larger price items in the craft room, but I wanted to show some love to some of the smaller guys as well. So for number three, I wanna shout out Mint Tape. Now, I get questions all the time about what this blue tape is in my videos, and the answer is mint tape. Now, what is mint tape is the next question, right? <laughs> so it's actually a low tack tape. I often compare it to a sticky note or a post-it note. Uh, it feels the same. It's got that paper texture like a post-it note, and it's about as sticky as one of those post-it notes. And the uses for it are honestly limitless. One of the things I use it for most is taping my dies into place whenever I'm die cutting, especially if I am cutting out a stamped image and I have a coordinating die. If I've stamped the image and colored the image, the last thing I wanna do is cut it out and cut it out misaligned and have to start over. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use my mint tape to actually tape that die in place so that I know I'm gonna get the perfect cut out. The other thing that it's great for that I use all the time is masking. So you can use the mint tape as it is to create beautiful masked straight edges, especially if you're ink blending, if you ink blend straight up to the edge. Since the mint tape is low tack, you can pull the mint tape off your cardstock and it won't harm your cardstock, but it'll leave a beautiful straight edge. It can also be used to to mask objects. So if you wanted to stamp directly on your mint tape or just cut a shape out of your mint tape, you can then use that as a mask on your projects as well. And lastly, of course, it's tape. It does what tape does. So if you wanna tape something in place, you can do that. I can't tell you how many times I have used my mint tape to help hold objects and supplies in place whenever I'm taking photographs of them. Continuing on with the love for the little guys, I can't do this video without talking a little bit about my tape runner. Now, I kind of feel like Tape Runner is a little bit on the way out. A lot of crafters are switching to primarily using liquid glue, which makes sense. It does have a stronger hold over time. It also is a little bit more environmentally friendly and it can get into the little nooks and crannies that sometimes Tape Runner can't. But I can't lie, there's just something so satisfying about using this thing. It's the noise, it's the motion, and it is so dang convenient. A lot of times people will ask, how I decide which adhesives to use and when. And if I had to tell you when I use Tape Runner, it's when I want something quick, efficient, convenient, and I don't need a ton of accuracy. So if I'm taping down a large object that's not super intricate, I'm gonna grab my Tape Runner. 
If I'm feeling lazy and I don't want to deal with the mess of liquid glue, I'm going to grab my tape runner. And when it comes to tape runner, I've used a lot of them and I haven't come across a tape runner that I just outright didn't like, but this tape runner by AdTech is definitely my favorite. And no, they don't pay me to say that though. AdTech, if you're listening, my inbox is open. But this guy just has never let me down. I love the rounded kind of spool at the end. It makes applying really easy. It's always been super smooth. And the case opens up so you can actually just buy replacement tape instead of replacing the whole tape runner. I'm not a big fan of using the tape runners where you have to constantly replace the full thing. Okay, so the next small but heavy hitter is right here in my hands and it is these reverse tweezers. Now, I have a lot of tweezers around my craft room. I don't even think that this is all of them, and that's because I need them within arm's reach at any time. Now, we're not talking about your normal tweezers. We're not talking about your grandma's tweezers. We're talking about reverse tweezers, y'all. These are tweezers that are locked by default, meaning that the tips are pushed together by default without putting any manual pressure on the tweezers. Now, these are really helpful for a couple of reasons. One, if you are a 28-year-old arthritis patient like myself, you will find these to be a godsend. And also, if you have large get-in-the-way fingers like myself, you will find that you have a much easier time adding elements, especially the small little elements like sequins and tiny little die cuts to your card, if you have a tiny dainty little pair of tweezers to do that work for you. The other great thing that I love about these reverse tweezers that I feel like doesn't get enough love is the fact that they can help hold your paper together when you're waiting for glue to dry. So a lot of times if I have bits of paper that I'm gluing together with liquid glue, especially if I'm like stacking word dies or sentiment dies, I will actually put those together, clamp them together with my reverse tweezers, and then I can just set them on the desk. They'll be held together in place until it's dry. Long story short, get a pair of these or several. Now, while I'm sitting here at my desk, or it's actually my second desk, this is like my crafting desk. That's my filming desk, in case you're curious. I don't know how I fit two desks in this tiny, tiny little room but we're making it work. Anyway, up here on my pegboard where I have my camera very safely sitting right now, I have one of my next favorite most used supplies, and that is my rectangle nesting dies. I cannot tell you how many times I am grabbing for these while I am making cards, hence the reason they are right here next to my desk. Now, the great thing about these cards in particular is the largest die is an A2 size die, so that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches, so it can cut out the perfect size front panel for your traditional card front. So if you notice in a lot of my videos, I don't typically trim my card fronts down using my paper trimmer. I'll actually use that rectangle die. And that's because whenever you use a die, you get that really nice, finished, polished, kind of rounded edge on the side where the cardstock was cut. So I find that if I used my rectangle die, it just kind of elevates your card a little bit more than just using a paper trimmer or scissors. The other thing I love in particular about this set is since the largest die is an A2 size, that means every other die that nests inside of it is proportional to that A2 size. That means it's extremely easy to create layers and borders on your cards and know very well that they're all gonna be proportional. I particularly love this nesting set from Hero Arts. They call their nesting dies infinity dies. And I love theirs because the inside edge is so thin that it's not gonna create that impression like some dies will. Some dies will have a large inner border um, and sometimes you'll see that impression on the cutouts. These in particular do not leave that impression and so that's why I keep them at the ready at all times. Okay it's time for another heavy hitter and this time it's my die cutting machine. Now I don't care who you are or what type of card making you're doing but I think that everyone needs a die cutting machine and frankly when you're choosing a die cutting machine it can be incredibly overwhelming. You have manual die cutters, electric die cutters, and then you have your digital die cutters like crickets and silhouettes. I'm not gonna get into the nuances of all of those. Like I said, I plan to do a beginner's card making video soon and you can check out the details of all of that there. For the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna focus on the die cutting machine that I use all the time, which is my Sizzix Big Shot. I find that the size of this machine is perfect for pretty much anything I wanna do. I do have smaller die cutting machines and I also have larger ones and this is the one that I keep on my desk pretty much all the time. A die cutting machine will give you the ability to cut out images and also emboss papers to give extra texture to your projects. I tried just a minute ago to sit and think about a card that I've done that didn't use my die cutting machine and it's honestly really hard to think of one. So regardless of the brand, the size, whether it's electronic, digital, manual, you gotta have a die cutting machine, at least in my opinion. Okay, so we finally reached the very last product on my can't live without list, and that is my spring assist scissors. I really feel like a bad 
whenever I do that. These scissors quite literally change the cutting game for me. I hate fussy cutting. That's one reason I often buy the coordinating dies with all of my stamp sets. It's because I can't bear to cut things out manually. Yes, I'm a princess. However, these little guys with the spring and their little fine tip has made cutting things out, especially fussy cutting, so much easier. I find that if I'm trying to fussy cut out stamps, I get a much more accurate, much cleaner look just because of the precision that I can get with these. I also find that the way that the handle is made, it doesn't hurt my hand as much. Remember, 28 year old arthritis patient here. I find these to be so much easier to cut with in general. Now I wouldn't use these to replace my larger eight inch scissors, but these are really great for fine details and cutting out small stamped images. And for that, I wouldn't be caught without them. All right guys, that wraps up my list of can't live without products. Do any of these make your list of can't live without products? Leave your list down in the comments. I think it'd be fun for all of us to kind of compare which products are on our own lists. And remember, this is not necessarily a beginner's essentials list to card making. I do plan to make a beginner's card making video soon. So if you enjoyed this video and you wanna stick around for that, please subscribe to my channel. I would absolutely love to have you join our little community here. And even if you don't, if you wanna give this video a like, that really helps me out more than you know. So I would really appreciate that as well. And if you are a beginner and you're looking to get started in card making and crafting, I do have kind of an essentials list that lays out some of the most used products that I think would be helpful for a beginner. So if you're new, check that out. If you have questions, leave it in the comments. Either I will get back to you, or I'm sure we have so many great longtime crafters around here that they would be happy to share their knowledge as well. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you next time. Bye y'all.